Welcome to Failing For You, where I'll fail so you don't have to, or even better yet, so you can too. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Failing For You. I'm your host, Jordan Yates, and today I have another very special guest. His name is Ian Stork, and he's going to teach us all about videography, photography, and tell us about his trials and tribulations along the way, what he's learned, and how he's become so freaking awesome. He's a bit humble, so he may not call himself freaking awesome, but I will. I can attest. So, Ian, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, My name's Ian. I am a freelance video producer and photographer and mainly focusing on the manufacturing industry. Uh, I like to do content creation for businesses, learn more about them, and help them create the best videos and photos to help tell their stories. That's awesome. Yeah, I I don't remember. We connected like a week ago, and I clicked on his page, and then I went to his YouTube channel, and I was like, hold on. This quality is so, so good. I felt jealous for a moment, I, I'll admit. Oh. I was like, can I kidnap you and keep you as my sidekick? No, he's too important. He has things to do. Can't be kidnapped right now. So I thought, middle ground, let's invite him on the podcast. Maybe he'll teach me something. Maybe he'll teach you guys something. If you're wanting to get into videography or photography, or if you're wanting to just be someone who works freelance and you need to know a little bit about like how to go about that, we'll see what all we get into. But guys, I know no matter what, it's going to be a good episode. I have faith in Ian and I have a little faith in myself. So... Awesome. Um, Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah, I'm so excited. So before we get into the full interview, I like to do my segment, Failure of the Week. So this is where you guys kind of keep up to date with me and I tell you what I failed at this week. It's just a nice way to stay caught up with one another. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'll show you my little project I did this week. It was a soldering lamp project. It's a little square box, has like 18 LEDs. Super cute once I got it finished, but guys, the last two soldering projects I did, if you don't know what soldering is, it's basically like mini welding, and you put a bunch of little pieces on a board, and sometimes it lights up. This one was supposed to light up. So were the last two projects. The last two projects did not, and I'm telling you, after you solder on 40 LEDs, and it doesn't turn on, and then you realize you put all your components on backwards, very upsetting. So... I got to the point where I was down to my last component and plugged in the battery. It did not turn on. I was about to just be so upset. I just recorded everything and it was like, no, not again. And then I realized I forgot a piece. So I added it on and then it turned on. I closed the circuit. Everything was okay. But my failure was the fact that I almost gave up on something because I got frustrated. What I learned is sometimes you just got to, you know, take a beat look at it again if it's something as simple as an electromechanical little light then guys just just take a take a beat reevaluate and it'll be okay and if it doesn't turn on try again but that was failure of the week okay so now we are moving on to the juicy stuff Ian, we're going to ask you a series of questions. We have a list we may or may not stick to it because i feel like there's a good chance we get carried sure. away So I guess we'll just start with question number one. Keep it super basic is, well, the question's basic. You can elaborate. Um, Tell us about what your current job is and what you do, which I guess you already kind of did that. But if you want to go into like more depths on what it is to make content for manufacturers like what kind of content are you making so yeah the the two main things that i that i offer as like my main services are the photo and the video side of things Mm -hmm. also including the strategies for what types of video what types of photo like what will be most useful when i'm talking to someone and they come to me looking for oh we'd like to think about making a video of this type or we're thinking about making some content like this Mm -hmm. When I go into those meetings, it's not just to say, all right, let's make this thing. It's no, let's figure out what's going to be the most effective thing. I I actually had a a call with someone recently and they were talking about integrating video. And by the end of the the call, I was just like, video is not the best route for you at the moment. Wow. And so like, I'm not even going to 
beat around the bush with something like that. I don't want to sell someone something that they, they don't need at yeah. the time. But yeah, it's it's a lot of that. And I love the the working together and figuring out what is the best story to tell? What is the best content? And mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's really cool. I can go on and on. I'm not sure how many follow up questions you want to go, but once you get oh, me we'll, talking, we'll you'll get me going. A lot. Yeah. So like, I, I guess it's really interesting because people who own businesses, like you're, you have to do like the the customer acquisition as well, right? So like you yeah. find the people to work with. So mm -hmm. the fact that you're out here saying, hey, you actually don't need all of these services. Guys, that's a good thing when somebody is being an honest advisor to you that they could potentially get more money out of you, but he's not. He's clearly out here wanting to do what's right for the customer. And that's pretty cool and pretty rare to find that. So Ian, thanks for being a good person. You're gonna have good karma. We're probably hey, I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I love doing what I do. Like what I do is, uh, thankfully like I don't work a day in my life almost it feels because I love yeah. doing and I love creating the stuff that I that I create and working with people to help tell these stories and so yeah it's it's just a case of where I don't like what what is if I give someone this thing that you know I haven't we haven't flushed out we haven't discussed we haven't come up with the proper path for it or where it fits into their roadmap like mm -hmm. if it doesn't do anything for them what's it also going to do for me to show off them as a client you know like as yeah. what we help them accomplish if it doesn't actually find itself useful for them exactly. if, if that makes any sense like I, no, I don't want to give someone that. something that just is pointless yeah no ROI and you're just kind of like good luck here's the cool video like it'll look pretty but you're just kind of like let's not just do something we don't need to do for the sake of doing it right right so i guess bringing it back a little bit how did you first get into photography or videography what what was first photo or video what did you find first that you loved so actually the first for me was video uh okay. when i was in middle school and high school Every time there was a project that could have been a video, I was making it into a video. I like, love that. <laughs> I was doing I was doing the on camera stuff. I did I did theater acting for years, mm -hmm. and I was always doing like crazy skits and silly things. I did stop motion some stuff. Uh, in in high school, there were like editing competition for like you know who can make the coolest little video, and I yeah. I made like a fake trailer for a movie and won a oh won gosh. a won a tablet. Oh and it was little things like that that made me want to continue and like pursue video. But at the same time, I like I said, I was an actor. So I went to college mm -hmm. for theater and video production. Dang, so you're uh, like so, good at this. <laughs> so, well, I, I'm, I'm good at being on camera too because of the acting background. Like it's, it's literally because of that. And so I, I started doing that and I was involved in both sides of theater and video. And by junior year, to me, it was video is where the focus really became and what I really became passionate about was the writing the scripts editing the project filming the whole shebang and mm -hmm. it was less of me being on camera because I'm just like I'm not going to be a I'm not going to be a stage actor that's not where I want to <laughs> be for my career but yeah and so I just kind of fell in love with that creation process and I've always loved movies so always mm -hmm. analyzing films and seeing you know cool shots as well as cool thematic things that I can put into them and so that's been a huge inspiration for me and yeah once I, I graduated college in 2016 with the degree in film and ventured out forward into the world so when you first graduated did you were you freelancing like in college already like when did you start your business okay so yeah there the, the business actually started in 2021 okay so my journey up until then was while I was at the college, I was doing the video production for the school with mm -hmm. a, a crew of people like the little commercials and the event coverage and little yeah. stuff like that. And then once I was a junior, right before my last year of school, I started doing like a small internship at uh, my great uncle's manufacturing company. Oh, and, so cause I knew into that. Yeah. They didn't have, they didn't have marketing at the time. They, or they had a marketing department of, I think two people and they didn't have any, video no photo creation things like that at the at the moment and so we're like hey ian does it he's working in college give him a summer to you know get in the shop and start figuring out you know doing work outside of school mm -hmm. and so i did that for that summer and then once i graduated i went back there and started work in the marketing department wow so 
with him doing manufacturing, did he was he ever like disappointed that you didn't go for like engineering or something more manufacturing related? Were they like, how'd you get into video, or were they like excited about that, or how how was that? No, um, well, he was. You know, I have a I have a pretty big extended family when it comes yeah. to it, and almost all of them are in manufacturing in wow. these couple businesses here. But uh, my dad worked at the company for years and years and years, and my mom and dad were really supportive on my Aww. choices. They're like, they're like, do whatever you want. I like you them. get the you get the good <laughs> grades. They're like you get the good grades and get the scholarship. You can do whatever the heck you want. And so Absolutely. yeah, I did. I did get the scholarship to my school, um, quite a few, and so that was a big part of my decision as well. And yeah, I just went for it. And then once I graduated, I was free to do wherever I'd like to go. But once I got into that manufacturing industry there and had that job and just started, it just started snowballing and snowballing after that. Mm -hmm. And so. Picking up there, 2016, I was working in the marketing department, and I believe in 2018 or 19, our marketing department got absorbed into a marketing agency. Oh wow! So we were we were servicing that current company plus other companies uh, under a under a different branding, and so I was there with this agile marketing agency until about 2021, mm -hmm. and then when I moved to Wisconsin, I. I, this was when I was in Rockford, Illinois before I okay. moved to Wisconsin, up, up here to Madison, and I went full time freelance. And, so you great. know, I have I have the years of experience with the manufacturing industry. It's not like I was going to, you know, stop being connected to it and stop yeah. creating content for it. So, yeah, that's my niche. And that's where I'm at here, here and now. Yeah, I think that's so special because I, I guess you've probably seen on LinkedIn. I mean, it could be my observation based on my experience, but I feel like the whole video in manufacturing is becoming a trend and it's like more manufacturers are trying to get into it. It's kind of a scary thing. LinkedIn is kind of a scary thing for a lot of them. And so rather you're talking right now to individuals or individuals who are working for manufacturing companies who want to implement video there, um, it's it's happening right now and you're definitely ahead of the curve which makes you good for counsel and as somebody that they can ask for advice so i would guess what i would want to ask for the listeners is if they are let's say in a marketing department at a manufacturing company and they want to start making video but they're not ready to really invest in someone else doing it for them maybe they want to do it themselves do you have any tips for them to get started yeah. Um, well, so plugging my LinkedIn real quick, I do have a lot of videos. Every week I upload a video that's either a tip about filming in the manufacturing industry, gear, that's a great recommendation for you if you're just getting started and all, all different kinds of things. But if, yeah, one thing I'll say is just start, just start creating. Okay. And if you, if you're building up your presence on social media, you're building up your website, it can be as simple as a cell phone video. Uh, if you're if you're starting there, you could be a one man shop, you know, two two person, three person job shop. They're not going to have a dedicated marketing person even. And mm -hmm. if you're at that level and you're just, you know, trying to make a little bit of wave on on social media and get a little bit going there, it's it's as easy as you know taking a picture of a part before and after, taking a picture. Hey, Monday the machines are going. Have a great week. <laughs> like it's it's yeah. very it's just as simple as that. It's all about being consistent it's just mm -hmm. being there people see your face people see your business logo they see your name they know who you are just from being consistent showing up in their feed and yeah if you're starting with n nothing no content barely anything to your name it's just about just just do it yeah I agree it's like and my, my favorite saying lately is um, don't let overthinking cause you to underdo so yeah. it's like sometimes we wait too long to try to make it perfect have all the right equipment like when i recently got back into making youtube videos again about a month and a half ago i was like okay i have a, I have a bit of a shopping problem i'll be honest i've mentioned that before <laughs> i i my tendency is oh i need all this equipment i need all this stuff but instead i was like i'm gonna do this on my iphone if i become good at this successful at it, it becomes like a thing i stick to i'll get a nicer camera but iPhone quality is not bad. Like my quality right now, I'm using just a MacBook 
Pro, I think, for my mm-hmm. video camera. Obviously, Ian's is better. He's using some other fancy camera. <laughs> yeah, I got Ian's a 4K awesome. camera plugged into my computer, but we I got him laying him around. That. So, yeah. So, like, just start with something, and you'll get better as you go. And we'll link Ian's LinkedIn and YouTube and all that in the show notes, so you guys don't have to look for him. It'll just be right there. But when you go on his um, YouTube channel, his videos of instructions of equipment to use are like one to two minute videos, and you guys will really appreciate that. He gets right to the point. It's good quality. It's very helpful. Unlike my videos sometimes are a bit long-winded and I'm like, hi guys, I missed you so much, blah, blah, blah. No, Ian gets to the point. So if you're busy, watch his videos. If you're bored, watch mine. (laughs) Um, So yeah, we'll have all that linked below. His stuff is good. And you guys know I only give you honest recommendations because you'll find out one way or another. And if you don't like Ian's videos, then we're not friends. So next question. <laughs> Ian, I'm sorry. I guess Ian oh, and I have only fine. ever texted before. I don't think we've had a video call. You haven't no. been around my full personality No, nope, I haven't. That's totally fine. <laughs> oh, brother. Um, okay, so those were kind of the next question of tips and beginners, like what to do. You're saying jump in. If someone yeah. says, okay, so you have these video qualities, like fast moving machines and like, it's so crisp. It's so clear. Do you have like a, a camera recommendation if you're recording fast machines? Like what's your go-to camera for that? Like if mm. it's something spinning or moving, um, if you want to think about it, we could always put it in the show notes later, but do you have for like manufacturing a go-to camera? Ah, uh, I really don't. Okay. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I really don't. It's it's just really about, in terms of making it look good or capturing it, it's just about using settings and lighting mm-hmm. that's going to make it be a clearer image. Okay. Obviously, when you're filming inside of a machine with closed doors and coolant, you're probably not going to get a great video anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, most I do for those is throw a GoPro in there with a waterproof case and okay. do, you know, do, you know, uh, uh, test it out to make sure that as soon as the tool comes in to start cutting, it doesn't just blast the coolant directly onto the camera and you don't see anything yeah. anyway. So it's it's definitely trial and error a lot with okay. that. But if, if fast moving machi- machines and stuff, it's I think it's just more about knowing your camera and knowing how to use manual settings in order to mm-hmm. get that set up to capture it, just to capture it properly. Yeah. I will say if you're if you're trying to catch something faster, you, I mean you can you can shoot in higher frame rates. You can okay. shoot in higher frame rates to maybe slow things down in post. Not that you ever want to slow down a fast moving machine in post. <laughs> Never ever do that. That's a that's a tip. I'll just throw that one out okay, there. Okay, right that's good to know. That's the last thing people want. People will sometimes ask you, and I've only had this happen like twice, and I've immediately shut it down. Can you make <laughs> our machine look like it goes faster? <laughs> Never. That's hilarious. Never do that. that. Is so this was funny. years and years. This is this is. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I've been asked that twice or once or twice, and it's just we've always been like, nope, cannot do that. Yeah, I I speed up my soldering videos only because I'm like – you either can sit here for an hour and watch me solder or you could watch me for eight minutes. So, right, but fair. I'm not trying yeah. to pretend I'm that fast. Yeah. I just do it because I, I'm kind and caring and I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to say, yeah, I could solder an entire board in eight minutes. Absolutely yeah. not. I'm we sure someone five. could. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure somebody can, but it's not me. That is, that is something I struggle with though, is sometimes with my soldering like it's such small components like as you guys can see that like it's kind of hard to capture up close sometimes like quality Mm -hmm. photos like photos not so bad but the videos when you're moving and then the camera tries to adjust like at some point i'll upgrade my camera but for now you know like i get a hundred views on youtube but they don't seem to care too much maybe maybe i could get more if it was a little better i guess that is kind of a question have you noticed that if your quality is better, you attract more? Or I, I don't know if that's a silly question, but... Um, I don't have data to back that up. Mm-hmm. I, I will say that it, you know, quality doesn't always dictate the value of the content. Okay. Uh, you can have You can have something that looks amazing, but really doesn't speak to anyone, really doesn't say anything you know you can have a really flashy highlight reel that doesn't say anything or you can have a genuine cell phone video of someone talking about their product and and that might 
even be the more effective thing and that can connect to people better yeah what i that's why i like to when i like to do my videos i yes i love to do the high quality stuff but also i always try to make sure i put someone on camera i yeah. usually try and stay away from from other types just just purely because you know having that human connection and that just adds to like a genuine piece of content mm -hmm. so i think i think yes the 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 4k video and high frame rate and stuff can be really eye-catching but it's not it doesn't directly correlate to like how valuable the content is because yeah. you can still go into the shop create a create a video of something with your phone that goes viral over a brilliant you know trailer video of some sort yeah. of machine Absolutely. So I would say something that I've kind of gathered from this and in agree or disagree is if you're just trying to get started, just use the equipment you have, get going, try to have good lighting. Lighting's very important. Yeah. Um, but if you're to the point where it's like, okay, I really want to step up my game, consider hiring somebody like Ian and looking into a service like that, because sometimes you don't need to spend all that money on your equipment that you may not know how to use because there's nothing worse than having really expensive equipment you can't mm -hmm. use and you don't have the time to use. Right. Ian, do you travel for customers? Like what's your what's your geographic area you'll go to? I um I'll travel the across the country. Uh I haven't yet ventured into Canada or Mexico because that's a little bit of more paperwork. Oh but, yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, for for right now, yeah, I will travel across the country and like you said uh, there's places that have marketing departments they have marketing teams mm -hmm. they're creating their in-house video productions as well but maybe they're not at a maybe they can't send their full team to a trade show but i'm going to be at mm -hmm. the trade show and sometimes that's how i link up with places you know create some booth videos create content for them there but then also the case where companies got you know they've got someone making their social media they're they've got someone making like services videos and little things like that but maybe they have a really big production there they're envisioning mm -hmm. maybe they're celebrating a company anniversary something yeah. like that that's where places have reached out to me and like listen this is a huge project what are your thoughts on it? And that's mm -hmm. the thing that I like to tell them is with me, since I do the full service, the the scripting, the outlining, the storyboarding, all the way through to the editing is like, if you're a marketing manager or the media specialist at your company, you can hand off the project to me. We can jump in back and forth for meetings. I'll mm -hmm. see you when I'm filming and then I'll see you when I'm sending you revisions. But it's really a thing where I can sort of, you know, fill out those places where they they're not covering and yeah. you know just take it off their take the weight off their chest of like a big project yeah and uh so yeah i mean even if a place yeah even if a place has a marketing department has a team like i'm i'm always available and in contact with these people just in case there's something that comes up where you know they need another resource yeah absolutely because i mean my full-time job i'm a marketing engineer we have a department of like seven or eight people but when it comes time to record videos, we outsource that because none of us have time to learn how to get really good at that. Like we'll make the content, we'll make it all like the storyline, whatnot. But then yeah. it's like, why would we travel to do that to all the different facilities if we work remote? Like that's just not a good use of our time when there's mm -hmm. people specifically like you that know what to do. You show up, you go there and like, it's just in and out like, because you know what you're doing. And that's so valuable because I know we live in a world of DIY and I'm a DIY yeah. girly all day. Oh, I am too. I am too. <laughs> believe things, me. Some things you should let other people do if you want it done at an expert level. And Ian's a resource for that. But Ian... We've talked you up so, so much. Yeah. But as you know, the, the theme of failing for you is telling us about what you've struggled with along the way and some failures that have incurred and kind of how you got through it. So rather it be learning how to use the equipment, learning how to be a business owner, kind of just tell us like something you struggled with and how you got through it. Like we would love to hear that. Yeah. Um, so basically the biggest struggle that I've been dealing with recently when I started going freelance is getting clients. Yeah. So, I mean, once you become a freelancer, like it is, it is on your own. You are, you are sales, you are marketing, you are everything, your finance, your everything that a company has that you're usually used to someone taking care of for you. Yeah. So, you know, find your own 401k, find your own <laughs> health insurance, find all this, get it organized, you know? So there's a lot, a lot to that. I will say in terms of me failing, 
the biggest thing is is I'm a I'm a person who is very frank and very upfront about things. Mm-hmm. So if if I see a company that if I saw and this is in 2021, if I saw a company that maybe they're totally in my wheelhouse of what I've worked with, I see they don't have video production maybe. Maybe they've got mm-hmm. videos, they haven't updated things in years. And I'm I'm hungry cuz I just became a <laughs> freelancer. I was totally all in on cold calling okay and and cold mainly cold messaging or mm-hmm. cold emails no no phone calls <laughs> but also even when I'm uh when I'm like out riding my bike I'd drive by a company I'd see hmm manufacturing company I'd go on LinkedIn I'd go on their website yeah. I'd look them up and I'd be like next time I drive by here I'm just gonna go in and drop off my card uh-huh. because for me it's it's like Yes, I can wait for people to discover me, but at the same time, I'm I don't like sitting around waiting. I'm I'm very yeah. much let's get it. Let's do it. And so I would be the guy who would just be like knocking on doors, handing out the card, messaging marketing directors being like, "Hey, this is who I am. This is what mm-hmm. I do. This is what I'm specialized in. If you ever need, you know, if you ever need a freelancer, if you ever need additional people, feel free to let me know. I would just love to be here as a resource, just getting myself on people's radar. And yeah. so that's what I was doing. And then I started reading a lot more about what you should be doing. Oh, and so that was not, not right <laughs> that was not it. That was not it. Uh, according to a lot, you know, it's still, I mean, oh, many yeah. people have different ideas on sales and, and things like that. And so yeah. it's not to knock people who still do cold calling because it, it's a massive thing. But it's a yeah, I, world. I was feeling that it wasn't, it wasn't as effective Okay. It wasn't very effective, but uh, so I started changing my tune of how I would do it, and I talked with a lot of good people on on LinkedIn. Uh, one of them being Eddie Saunders Jr. I'm not sure if mm-hmm. you know who he Sounds is. Familiar, he's, yeah. he's an awesome, awesome content creator, awesome dude to connect with on LinkedIn. And he was really like, he he made he made he commented on one of my statuses. I I had made a post about something in the industry that I had thoughts on about video. Mm-hmm. And he was like, man, you could write a book. And I was like, I could write a book, but I'm not really that much of a writer. But you know what yeah. I could do is I could make a video. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what started me making these little like tip videos, my thoughts of like things I, you know, like how, and it would be how I failed. Like I messed up on this thing. This is what I learned. Or I messed up and I realized this is how I could have done it better and so through that that's when I started with the content creation which led to building up the LinkedIn presence building up the connections and the following and led me to where I am now but yeah so it it took that failure of trying to be a salesperson (laughs) to lead me to the right path of what has led me to create this like awesome community that I have on my page Mm -hmm. and led me to you know, do more and more work for more and more people. And it's, it's been really good, but yeah, that was a huge, huge learning experience for me because it was, it was just such a shock to just jump right into the deep end of, of freelancing. But I, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I did it now. Yeah. That sounds so scary. Cause like, I love stability in my life. Like I love my job. I like that. I don't have to like go out of my way to find benefits. Like I just have to mm-hmm. sign up in my portal and yep. you know, I've had a lot of things like, you know, what I do now on the side, like the podcasting, the video and whatnot, where I'm like, Oh, this would be fun if I could do this all the time. But then I just, I'm not someone that I'm at a point where I could just give up my stability so like that is so brave to do that and the fact that you did it you went through the struggle but you actually survived and dare I say thrived um you're here now and like it's cool that you live to tell the tale and can teach people and I know you're gonna do even more than you're doing now like I just I can see it you're gonna be in every manufacturer you're gonna have zero free time because everyone's Uh, gonna want you don't say that don't say that then you're gonna have like a hundred employees because everyone's like oh no (laughs) that that's a question would you ever start like getting to the point where you think you would hire other people or do you think it's simpler just being a one-man show yeah so I've I I really do love the simplicity and also I love just like having control of the entire project because yeah. I'm one of those guys who's like man if I just do it all I know that I'll get it done oh my right. god I, feel I don't you. and then and like yes. I don't I feel like I don't know if that's a good mentality or a bad mentality but complete honesty that's how I see it I'm like yeah. you know what let me handle it let me take care of it because in my brain I have the plan I know mm-hmm. exactly what I want to do how I want to do it how it's going to look when I film it and how it's going to be when I edit it 
ever since I write, when I start writing a project, doing an outline and a storyboard, I have the picture in my brain for the final video. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, I mean, yes, collaboration is a skill. And I did do that a lot when I worked on some productions that were like co-produced with other people in our agency and, and mm -hmm. working with the client's vision. But yeah, a lot of it is I just like to take it and I like to run with it. Um, but yeah, as of right now, I'm definitely content with just doing my solo <laughs> thing. Uh, ideally in the future, I don't know, depends on where we could take it. I could, you know, turn it into a bigger production company where I've got a staff where mm -hmm. I would, I would happily take the, the creative director role in a situation like that. Yeah. However, I do love going to, I do love going and filming and I love yeah. editing and all of the parts of the, I had someone ask me recently, they're like, Hey, what's your least favorite part of production? Would you ever like need some help with that? And I'm like, I can't even think of my least favorite part of production <laughs> because I, I love all of it. I'd say probably the least favorite is filming simply because I'll go fly somewhere, do a 12 hour day, fly oh home goodness. and then pass out for a day. Yeah. It's just cause it's physically tiring, but it's still enjoyable mm -hmm. from the creation sense. So yeah, I, I don't know what the future holds in terms of that. Uh, I was recently asked about my three to five year plans and the best thing that I could say is I just want to have a couple, couple good clients that I do recurring work for and then you know whatever video comes along the way and plus I still am gonna still gonna go to trade shows and so Ooh, that's a big yeah. thing on my YouTube channel and my my LinkedIn so what I started doing last year is I started going to trade shows making vlogs really cool cinematic vlogs trying to make you know the how awesome show off how awesome things are especially yes. through like my eyes with my style as well as as well as so booth videos things like that showing off if somebody's got a cool demo i'll stop and be like hey can i film this can you give me 30 seconds on camera and so that's what i've been populating yeah. like the linkedin with as well as the youtube channel but it's also a massive networking opportunity and i've met so many cool people like new people as well as people from my from my linkedin that i hadn't met in person before and yeah. so it's really great because uh through doing imts and fab tech last year it, it built up such a sense of community for me even more than mm -hmm. any sort of LinkedIn would. So, so trade cool. shows are coming back after COVID and trade shows are not dead. I know some people have, you know, <laughs> they brought up that question, you know, for a couple of years here, but no, yeah. trade shows are not dead. They are, they are great. And I still think face-to-face -face is the most effective form of networking and communication. And so yeah. this year, my goal is uh, 10 trade shows. Okay, that's traveling all like over. That. Yeah, luckily yes. I'm I'm near Chicago. I'm about okay. two two and a half hours, three hours outside of Chicago. Depends on the traffic. Four hours outside of Chicago, but uh, yeah, I plan on going to ten trade shows. I know the next ones oh, that I I can confirm. What can I confirm here? Uh, Automate. I have. Ooh, I'm I about to register. Really yep, up in Detroit. I'm about to register for Automate. And then uh, there's another one in Michigan, Advanced Manufacturing Expo, hoping mm -hmm. to go to Plastics, uh, Rapid TCT, maybe West Tech if I'm lucky, and uh, Fab Tech, of course. So, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's great. It's great to go out. It's fun. It, you, you learn so many new things and meet so many new companies. And I go to these places and I learn more, which is incredibly helpful to me because when I go to yeah. a manufacturer's and... You know, one of the things that they've, a lot of the people I've worked with have really liked about me is the industry knowledge. So since mm -hmm. doing it from 2015, I've picked up so many different, different bits of info of different things within the manufacturing industry because the umbrella of that industry is so massive. Oh, and yeah. so when I go to something like a fab tech or a, or a plastics show or an automation show, I'm, I'm just learning so much more about all of these, ex, uh, these, these industries. And I'm just like extending my reach across all of them. And it's really helpful for me. Cause then, you know, if I know the more I learn about automation, if an automation client comes to me, the more likely I am to provide value for them because yeah. I can talk talk the talk. I know what they're talking about. I don't have to ask a hundred questions about what to film. You know, I get to their shop, they say, Hey, we're going to have this cobot going. And I'm like, perfect. I'll get over there and I'll film some stuff of that this afternoon. Yes. So it's, it's a really awesome opportunity for, for me and for, I mean, for any person in media video, the industry in general, uh, yeah. I will not, not hype up trade shows. I I've always wanted to go to one like I've never been to one just I mean I've been to a lot of like smaller versions of things like that like the first kind of similar thing I'm going to is going to be the 
the ERA, it's like Electronics Representative Association. That's mm-hmm. going to be in Austin soon, but it's not a trade show. It's more of like uh, just people, no objects, no booths or anything. It'll right. Be like breakout sessions, like a things conference. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be good, like, you know, um, networking, but it won't necessarily be as cool as a trade show where you get to like see products. Like I've yeah. always wanted to do that. And I know with my company, there's a lot of cool ones coming up in the future. So I'm definitely going to sign up and go to some of those. And hopefully there'll be ones that we're both at. That would be yeah, exciting. You, you're going to have to you're going to have to let me know uh, when you figure out what you're going to be at. And especially if yeah. it's in the Chicago area, because there's a good chance that I'll be there. But definitely let yes. me know, because I would I would I would love to link up and chat. Yeah, no, that would be awesome. Um, so I guess one of my questions was, what's your favorite industry to create content for? I think it's manufacturing from what yes. I can tell. Well, yep, yep. Do you have a subdivision in it of like, I mean, I don't want you to pick a favorite and, you know, diss anyone else, but do you have a specific project or thing you've recorded where you're like, this was it, this was awesome? You know, uh, I, I love I love a lot about it. Like, there's a lot of really cool stuff so far. My favorite has been getting into the laser side of things and the fabrication Ooh, and lasers. Yeah, yeah. I did I did some of that. I also did some really cool stuff years ago. I haven't worked on it recently, but it was it was laser welding where it was shooting the powder into like cracks and then lasers were 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 welding it as the powder was being deposited into these because you can't weld when there's no when there's a gap there but it was on such a small scale on such a small scale that they're shooting the powder in and lasering into there i i love the laser technology like it's so amazing just the power that you are getting out of these machines and the speed especially. And that's why mm-hmm. Fabtech, Fabtech's really cool. So I've done a lot with uh, with that industry here just in the last year really is when mm-hmm. I started working on, on the laser side of things. Yeah, that's so cool. Uh, speaking of welding, I, I remember seeing my first welding robot and mm-hmm. I was mind blown. I was like, oh my goodness, this is magic. Like they move yeah. so fast and they're so intense and they're so precise. Mm-hmm. Like. I, being an engineer, seeing that, just thinking about the type of engineer that would have to program that, I always think that could not be me. I, I I like to say I'm decently smart at what I do, but those people who program that stuff are next level. Yeah. I know we all train, we get good at things, but my goodness, do I have respect for people who can automate such intense programs. I prefer to just enjoy them and watch them. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> my my engineering's the the kind I do so specific, but I, I that's what I love about manufacturing. There's so many kinds of machines, so many things you can automate, and I'm yeah. so jealous that you get to see this stuff up close and have videos of it. Gosh, when I was a sales engineer, I would see all this cool stuff too, but don't you dare pull your phone out. Like lots of times you can't even bring your phone on the shop floor because it's so confidential. Oh, Meanwhile, sure. here you are, VIP getting to take videos and getting paid for it i think it's so cool so cool i don't Um, know how much confidential stuff i've worked with i usually don't talk about much until i'm until it's the video's out so either way i don't know what's what's confidential unless someone says hey film that but don't tell anyone and then (laughs) then i know then i know it's good then i know i gotta keep it on the down low but oh my goodness (laughs) Um, okay, so I am basically to the end of my questions. I feel like a lot of these I've already kind of asked you along the way, but I guess I'll just leave it open ended for now of anything else there is that you want to share any tips, anything in particular, while we're still in the interview that you just think like, hey, this is cool. I want to tell people about it. Uh, if you want to start creating content, don't wait. Just create. Yes. Just that's a hey, that's a T-shirt. I'm gonna make that new that T-shirt. Is. Don't steal it. Don't steal it. We just oh, I, I just copyrighted t-shirts. it. Hold on. Don't, don't wait. wait. Just, create. just create. That's gotta be my branding. All right. Okay. Hold we just on, discovered hold this. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna shut up for a second. You're gonna say it again. And it's gonna be a great sound bite. Okay. Go. Don't wait. Just create. I love it. All right, guys. This is awesome. That's that's the theme of the episode. That's the title of the episode. That's the title. Yes. Put it on the graphic. Oh my goodness! And he's gonna make t-shirts. And if you want to buy one, hit him up. Don't hit sure. me. Sure. I don't make. Once t-shirts. I start my e-commerce site, we'll get it going. <laughs> Find my Etsy, and we will yeah. talk. There you go. See, you're already making a second business. Easy peasy. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jordan. You've you've helped me. I'm creating an empire out of that. I've transformed your career just with one saying, there you go. Um, So I guess now we're to the point of 
failures, lessons, and questions. This is where our audience can write in. Believe it or not, episode six, still no questions. So, someone did write in questions, but they wrote them specifically to Allie for her episode. Um, I also didn't Come on. P- remind people. I can't answer those. <laughs> so yeah, um, one of them was, what's your favorite hat? <laughs> so Allie's big hat girl. I don't know. I know. I've, s- I've seen it. That <laughs> I've seen. There's quite a few people on LinkedIn who, who always hashtag hat life and they've, yeah. they've started collecting hats. And I, I have to say, I just, I just commented on someone's status about about this the other day I was like dude when I go to a show I love trying to find hats or shirts because then I can mm-hmm. wear them when I make my videos and stuff like that I'm yes. like come on you get free advertising out of me I'll wear them when I walk around the trade show give me a free hat or a free shirt like I, I've gone up to I went up to a place at IMTS and they had a really cool shirt and it mm-hmm. was like it was like their product name but it also had like two electric guitars and fire on it oh my goodness. and I, I don't want to be the guy since I'm not like a I'm not like a a potential like customer of them. I don't want to just like grab a shirt and walk away. I don't like being that guy. So I, I, I like said to him, that guy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just, I'm just like, I don't know. Part of me is just, I don't want to, I just don't want to steal it from, you know, yeah, somebody, you know, but somebody else person. likes it more. But I asked the guy, I said, all right, let me talk. Let me talk. I love this shirt. I'm like, I can make you a, a quick booth video for your social. If you give me that shirt, and we did it. I made a 20 second video. I drop boxed it to him in like two hours and wow. I had a shirt that I wore the next day at the show. But yeah, I, I need that. to hat life. I want to start it. Okay. I got like, okay, I've got this two. I had someone pro- promise me that the next trade show they see me at, they're going to get me another one. I will have three hats total. So okay, that's I got to have more. Guys, I got to have more. We need, we need some donations of hats because Ian will post in it and wear it as long as it's not, you know, super oh, yeah. derogatory. Let's keep it manufacturing friendly. I'll guys. take it off if I go into a competitor's booth. I will take it off because yep. I've well, had to take my hat it. off too. <laughs> so we're going to give you his LinkedIn information, like I said. So you better reach out to him and you better offer him some free swag to show him that you support him. And he might make you a 20 second video. You never know. Ne- next so. time I see you. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But guys, I think that that's all we have for today. This was super fun. I yeah. really, really hope that that recording from the first half did not yeah, get me lost. Too. Me My too. browser just shut down. So I think it's fine. It says 99% uploaded. We're going to say a prayer. Um, but Ian, where can they find you? Do you have any other socials than LinkedIn and YouTube? We'll link them, but any other places that you are? Honestly, I'd say the the hub for for all of my content in general is going to be my LinkedIn, just Ian Stork okay. on LinkedIn. Uh, through there, you can find all of my video. I post video highlights from my trade shows, uh, cool booths I found, uh, cool photography. Uh, everything that you can think of is that's where I post it especially things like I even post my concert photography there. So wow. I'm a concert photographer and I, and I write for a, for an online website. And so I try to every Friday, if I have a show that week, I try to post my, my concert photography. And sometimes my concert photography performs better than my manufacturing photography during the week because people probably see manufacturing photography all the time on LinkedIn. But then all of a mm-hmm. sudden, like this crazy band comes through, like Ian's post, Ian just photographed Ario Speedwagon and everyone starts liking it because, you know, it's I different. Know it's that different. Is. That is an older group. Uh, yeah. What about sticks? What about sticks? Do you know sticks? And we're signing off. No, I'm oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm it's fine. uncultured, uneducated. I'm not very good at arts things. Um, yeah, I also have a terrible memory, so I might know, but I okay. have a terrible recall memory. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's all kinds of stuff there, and through that you can find my full portfolio on my website. So Yay. if you if you have any questions about just if you're trying to get started on video and you want to shoot me a message on LinkedIn, I'd be happy to answer any any of the questions you have. And if yeah, and if you are looking for video productions for your company or photos for your website or social, feel free to shoot me a message or an email for that and I'll talk more with you about that too. Yeah, guys, I saw today on LinkedIn Ian did somebody's I guess it's not headshots, it's just like professional photos. 
so good. Yep. I was so jealous of this man right off the bat. It was like, <laughs> are you really handsome or is this a really good photo? I don't know. Like you just look at it and you're like, whoa, that's, it's, that's it's, a nice photo. <laughs> yeah. Jim Carr. I posted his Jim Carr from Car Machine and Tool is, is who that mm-hmm. is. And that was some branding pictures for his new podcast. And I actually posted a, one of them a while back on a, on a bigger post with a bunch of photos. And someone pointed out and they went, they went, looks like Kevin Costner. And I was like, oh my I was like that's pretty good. That's a good one. That's a good one to be compared to yeah not not too shabby but (laughs) Ian thank you so much for coming on I am honored to have you as a guest I appreciate your wisdom your tips and your openness and your honesty with all the things you've gone through to get to this point um like I said we'll link everything below and one day maybe Ian will bring me on one of his podcasts if he ever has one Ian will you ever make a podcast I don't have time to start a podcast (laughs) Okay, There's fine. no way I have I, time. No, if I won't I, if, put that into the universe, but Ian may come back again one day, guys. Okay, so yeah, we'll and and if we're at a trade that. show, we'll film a video. We'll film a video yes. at a trade show. We'll put it on our YouTube's cross branding co promotion. Love to see it. Love to see it. But guys, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you as always. And yeah, I'll see you next week. I'm your host Jordan Yates, and in the meantime, I will be failing for you. Bye, guys.